Hey, what is up YouTube? So you guys asked me to review the Alto Advantage Carbon after my half marathon. So here it goes. Just to get some disclosures out the way, because I want to be as honest as possible with you guys. I'm not sponsored by Ultra and I bought these shoes with my own money. I was just lucky to find a small shop that managed to sell them early on. I did need to pay 250 euros for them. Now, I consider myself a typical mid of the pack runner. I just run for fun and I definitely don't run competitively. So this time it was my local half marathon in Hanover. It had been cancelled for the past two years due to COVID. So to be quite honest, I wasn't really expecting it to really happen this year and I really didn't train properly for it. Right now I'm in the middle of a training cycle for a mountain race in Dolomites in Italy. So my training has been primarily focused on elevation gain and running in the trails and really not so much about speed or road running at all. My taper was only eight days, so I didn't even have that much time to rest before the race. So just a little bit of context, uh, six years ago, I ran my personal best of 148 something, which I haven't managed to beat uh, for the past six years. Eight months ago in August, I ran 149 something. And when I saw the Vanish Carbons a few weeks ago, I just needed to get them, basically just out of curiosity. Then my first ever carbon fiber plated running shoe. So I cannot compare them with other brands. I can really only compare them with other ultras. So in Hanover, the marathon and the half marathon take place on the same day, and they even share parts of the course. But due to COVID this time, they really stretched out the corals. So um, I think in previous years, there would only be like an hour difference between the starting of the marathon and the half marathons. This time they stretched out to two hours. So when running on the road, it wasn't very busy at all. So the half marathons started two hours later than the marathon. And around midway, um, you start to mix again with the marathon runners. So the marathon runners, they take larger loops around uh, the city. So eventually midway, the running group starts to get slightly fuller and fuller and the um, variety of pace really starts to get a little bit bigger, which I think is also kind of more fun. The marathon always takes place in the spring, but this time it really got cold in the morning. It even snowed a few days ago and I had no idea what to wear. Usually for the half marathon, I wear t-shirt and shorts, but this time I wore long pants. I wore uh, three layers, a t-shirt, a running hoodie and a running jacket. I did bring my GoPro to the race and I filmed some bits, but eventually I didn't feel like filming much and I just decided to focus on the race. I told myself to not go out too strong at the beginning, but these shoes were so smooth that I just couldn't slow down. I really just enjoyed running fast in them. At around the third kilometer mark, I did start to feel a little bit of shin splints uh, creeping up and I've had issues with shin splints in the past few years. So I can't really blame the shoes for that. And to be completely honest, it's probably a combination between my tendency to heel strike. I know I shouldn't stop heel striking, but I'm focusing on not heel striking, but I, I, th I sometimes still do. And also my stubborn lack of of uh, not stretching enough and not warming up properly. And this all probably does have an effect on my shins. After a few more kilometers, I forgot about my shins. I was even running at a pace that usually feels too fast for me. And I honestly think that the shoes did help me run faster with less effort. It's either that or a placebo effect. In my opinion, the shoes are very comfortable. They're not too narrow, even though they are slim fit. And I didn't have any kind of heel slip with this heel cup. I virtually forgot that I was wearing shoes during the race. And they feel very different from other altars I've raced in in the past. Usually I do get one one or two bloody toenails after a race, also before I had ultras, but this time absolutely nothing, not even a single blister. But I do always tape in my ankles for just in case. I'd rather be safe and sorry, and I don't want to experiment during race day. Up until kilometer 16, I felt absolutely fine. I felt light and I felt that I could really keep my cadence up high. I was actually afraid that the high stack height, which I'm not used to, uh, would run a little bit instable, but the Ego Pro midsole felt firm yet bouncy and the rocket shape helped me lean forward while running, keeping up the momentum. But at the last five kilometers, I did start to struggle a little bit. My concentration was completely off. I couldn't concentrate on my cadence anymore. My legs were starting to get quite heavy. I was actually hoping to have enough energy towards the end to really go for it and maybe power through and uh, gain a few seconds or maybe even a minute or two. But as I said, I didn't really uh, specifically train for this half marathon, so I didn't have enough uh, speed sessions in me. I didn't do a single run that would simulate the race. So maybe if I had the mental strength, I could have maybe gained a few seconds towards the end. So after one hour, 45 minutes and 18 seconds, I managed to cross the finish line, which is four minutes faster than my race eight months ago. I would have wanted to run under 145, but I'm happy with the result. 
and snagging a PB, obviously. In my opinion, these shoes were amazing and I will now put them away for my next race. So far, only put 15 kilometers in them and the outsole already looks pretty beaten up, but these shoes were made for racing and that unfortunately doesn't mean that the durability will suffer. I even read somewhere that, the, uh, that people only expect to get 300 kilometers out of them. So that's a pretty high price to pay for such low mileage. I would not have bought them if they weren't ultra or zero drop. And I'm not really happy to spend that kind of money on running shoes, regardless of the racing benefit. So now the question is, are they worth getting? I guess everybody needs to make that decision for themselves. If you want a racing shoe that is zero drop and has a slightly wider uh, toe box than mainstream brands, then definitely go for it. I managed to snag a PB and I'm hoping to uh, run again in six months and get an even better time. But if you're just someone that wants to run for fun, maybe not get uh, such expensive shoes. They are actually really made for competitive runners. Alta just wanted to stay in the game and maybe even get a couple of competitive athletes to join their team. If you have any further questions about these shoes, I have made a couple of videos already. So how about you check them out? Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll try to answer all of them as soon as possible. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.